Royal Australian Navy landing helicopter dock HMAS Canberra L02 is filmed here as she sails out of Pearl Harbor to join a gathering fleet of ships waiting in the Pacific Ocean during Rim of the Pacific 2022. She is the first of two ships of the Canberra class. Construction of the ship started in Spain in 2008 with a hull launched by Navantia in 2011. The hull was then transported to Australia in late 2012 for completion by BAE Systems Shipyard in Williamstown, Victoria. Her sister ship, HMAS Adelaide L01, followed the same construction process and commissioned in December 2015. The two 27,000 tonnes, 230 metre ships are the largest naval vessels ever built for the Australian Navy. They are designed with the shallowest possible draft of 7 metres when in transit and 10 metres at anchor. This enables the ships to operate in secondary ports and harbours, as well as manoeuvre in the shallow waters common in the littoral regions. The ship's well deck can hold and launch a mixture of landing craft, inflatable rescue boats and even as seen here, the United States Navy 87 feet long, 185 ton Navy landing craft air cushion. The ship's heavy vehicle deck can carry M1 Abrams main battle tanks. They can also utilise decks to carry over 100 vehicles. The exact number of vehicles are dependent on the combination of weight and the size. The flight deck can operate six MRH-90 tapan sized helicopters or four chinook sized helicopters simultaneously with up to eight mix of S-70B Seahawk anti-submarine and MRH-90 helicopters stored in the hangar. The Royal Australian Navy has stated the ships will not operate fixed-wing aircraft. Interestingly, during RIMPAC 22, two US Marine Corps MV-22 Osprey tilt rotor military aircraft landing on the deck of HMAS Canberra. These aircraft with both vertical takeoff and landing and short takeoff and landing give the aircraft the functionality of a conventional helicopter with a long range high speed cruise performance of a turboprop aircraft. The US Marine crew assigned to Marine Medium Tilt Rotor Squadron VMM-165 operated from the ship during the duration of RIMPAC exercises. This is the first time Ospreys had landed on a Canberra class deck and were also successfully moved off the flight deck into the hangar for the first time. During the RIMPAC exercises, Ospreys and helicopters practiced landing troops onto the deck of Canberra, which has the capability to transport 1,046 soldiers and their equipment and can carry 1,600 in overload conditions. You have probably noticed by now both the Canberra class ships have ski jump ramps at the bow end of the flight deck. These are essential for short takeoff and vertical landing aircraft with large payloads such as the Harrier jump jet and F-35 variants. So why the ramps if you're not going to use them? The answer is the ships are practically 
a one off the shelf hull design based on the warship Juan Carlos Primero, built by Navantia for the Spanish Navy. She was commissioned a few years earlier than the Camera class ships in September 2010. The Australian ships have the same physical dimensions, including the ski jump, but differs in its internal layout due to the specific operational requirements of each of the two navies. The one Carlos Primero can operate eight EAV-8B Harriers from her flight deck at any one time and can also carry up to 12 Harriers in her hangar, depending on the mix of aircraft and vehicles carried. Interestingly, the Spanish Navy were due to retire the Harriers, but announced that they had decided to extend the aircraft service life to beyond 2025, with no definitive retirement date. Its replacement was due to be the F-35B, but this aircraft has a gross weight of 22,000 kg, and produces much more heat when it lands and takes off than the 10,410 kg Harrier fighters. The Spanish amphibious assault ship deck will require new heat resisting coating on the flight deck to withstand the exhaust heat of the F-35B and possibly some structural strengthening of the flight deck due to the F-35B weight. These potential costly modifications added to the estimated 115 million US dollars for each F-35B aircraft as at this point proving too costly against available Spanish defence budgets. The one Carlos Primero design has proven to be popular. The Turkish Navy has also ordered one of these ships, but required to be built under licence in Turkey. And in 2016, construction began on the shipyard of Sedaf Shipbuilding Incorporated in Istanbul. The Turkish Navy originally planned to carry 10 F-35B aircraft, keeping its ski jump ramp and incorporating deck strengthening and heat resisting coating on the flight deck during the build. However, the US Senate blocked the export of the fighter jet to Turkey due to its purchase of the S-400 missile system from Russia. The now named ship TCG Anadolu, shown in these pictures, began our first sea trials on the Sea of Mamara on June 20, 2022. TCG Anadolu is planned to be transformed to a drone carrier. Turkey has become one of the world's leaders in drone technology. It's understood that Baykar, a Turkish drone manufacturer, announced in early 2021 that it was working on a specific unmanned combat aerial vehicle called TB-3, an improved and folding wing version of the combat-proven TB-2 drone that will be deployed aboard the carrier. Turkey has installed most of its own naval offensive and defensive systems and began the integration of a drone launching system. The ship will maintain its fundamental role as an amphibious assault ship, operating a number of landing craft types, including a new armoured tracked amphibious naval assault vehicle nicknamed Zaha. The construction of a sister ship to be named TCG Trakia is also being planned by the Turkish Navy. There have been discussions and studies made in Australia on the potential to modify the Canberra class ships to operate the F-35B. In the last few years, Japan has started the process of modernising the larger Azumo helicopter carriers and the United States Navy the even larger WASP and America classes. Costing several years ago and modifying the Australian ships was estimated to cost 500 million Australian dollars. However, in 2018, after the Japanese Ministry of Defence press release stating they would begin converting their two Azumo class helicopter carriers, they announced that an initial budget allocation of US $28 million for JS Azumo's initial conversion to operate F-35Bs and a much larger project and budget for converting the Azumo sister ship, Karga. Articles in the media have appeared recently pointing out the benefits of sharing resources between the UK, American, Japanese and Australian Navy primarily discussing the benefits of cross-decking. And to prove the cross-decking concept, the first F-35B to land onto the flight deck of the converted former helicopter carrier Izumo was by United States Marine Power in late 2021, highlighting the option and benefits for cross-decking when aircraft from a foreign military land on a ship often for the purpose of refueling or sharing a wealth of resources. In August 2021, for the first time in recent history, the US cross-decked jets for a mission using a foreign aircraft carrier, the Royal Navy, HMS Queen Elizabeth, which in turn landed RAF F-35B jets on amphibious assault ship USS America to load ordnance and refuel.
On the same day to push the cross-decking operations further, the Italian Air Force and the Italian Navy complete a major milestone by conducting F-35B cross-deck operations between HMS Queen Elizabeth and the Italian carrier ITS Kvar. The Italian hybrid landing helicopter dock and fixed-winged aircraft carrier is very similar in size to the Canberra-class carriers recorded here selling a year earlier with USS Gerald R. Ford. She had just completed a 16 months F-35B upgrade after retiring her Harrier jets. Kva will have room for 10 F-35Bs in the hangar and 6 more parts on the deck, as well as room for a range of vehicles. The modernisation enables the Italian Navy to seamlessly integrate with both the United States and Royal Navies, respectively. The cross-decking option could be a way forward to reduce overall costs associated with the conversion of Canberra-class ships by reducing the overall purchasing numbers of Australian F-35B by operating both guest nations and Australian F-35B aircraft. Does the Australian Navy even need a fixed-wing option for their landing helicopter dock ships? Nonetheless, it's very likely the Australian Navy is looking at the Japanese carrier conversions, the successes, drawbacks and benefits, especially on final costs and over the horizon north of Australia, Aussie Navy commanders will be monitoring the rapid rise of Chinese naval power.